The name of this video is uh, Potential for Distributions In fact, so far, we only consider the case uh, the electrostatic potential for a single particle with a certain charge, a small q in space. First case, let us consider the case of discrete charge distributions. In this case, for example, let us consider to have uh, uh, a set of small q1, small q2, dot small qk, dot small qn of point-like charged particles in space occupying a limited region of space. So all these charges are somehow contained in a limited region of space. In this limited region of space, again, we're going to have, this is going to be our a point a capital q1, there will be a small q1, a point capital q2, there will be a small q2 dots, a point uh, capital qk, there will be small qk, and finally dots, a point capital qn, capital n, there will be small qn, capital n, like this. And suppose to observe this region from a point capital P, which can be anywhere, could also be here. This is my point capital P, where resides my test charge, you know, this is the test charge where we observe this discrete charge distribution here. So in this case, for example, the vector distance between uh, capital QK and capital P is what we call R vector, capital QK, uh, capital P. This is my vector distance in uh, general. So we know that the electrostatic field E from Coulomb's law and the superposition principle. So E, the electrostatic field, and my observation point, uh, uh, capital P, is given by the linear superposition that is this sum from K that goes from one to capital N of uh, vector E underscore K at point capital P. So we are summing up all these uh, uh, fields. We know that each field can be written as a minus the gradient of the electrostatic potential associated with that field. So V1 minus the gradient of V2 plus dot minus the gradient of VK plus dot minus the gradient of V capital N, finally. So this eventually can be rewritten as uh, the uh, sum for K that goes from 1 to capital N of uh, minus the gradient of VK, the electrostatic potential for the KF particle, and finally, this quantity here, we can swap, since we are considering that all, as always, all these particles are fixed in an inertial reference frame, because of that, I can always swap the gradient with the sum, so I can perform this swapping operation here. So I take it in front, all right? And so by doing that, okay, of course, here, before the, the minus the equal sign, so we can rewrite this minus the gradient of the sum. For k that goes from 1 to capital N, of Vk. This quantity here is nothing but the superposition principle for the electrostatic potential B. And in fact, 
the source quantity, we can call it simply V, and of course, each of these will calculate the point capital P. All right. Since we know Coulomb's law, we can actually spell out this V. And so if we go up here, we can, we can write our V at point capital P as the sum for k that goes from 1 to capital N of 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. This is a Columbian type potential. That's why I say Coulomb's law because it's a Columbian type potential. So it's going to be up here the source charge small qk divided by the vector distance between that charge and the observation point, which is r from qk to p, r qk p. Okay, note that this sum has to include in general an additive arbitrary constant ck. So as it turns out, this arbitrary constant ck, we can write down the total constant c as the sum for k that goes from 1 to capital N, all the particles of ck. If we want to impose the limit for capital P that goes to infinite of v of p to be equal to 0, so to have again, as always, normal conditions at infinite, this implies as always, also in the case of a linear of a linear superposition, so a discrete distribution that C defined in this fashion has to be equal to zero. Normal conditions at infinity. All right. So now let us consider another case, another type of distribution, case two here, which is that of continuous distributions. Okay, in the case of continuous distributions, let us sketch here. So we have a limited region of space, as always limited. We call this region uh, capital omega in the three-dimensional space, characterized by a certain volumetric uh, charge distribution with density rho. Let us consider uh, an infinitesimal volume element, dv, let's say here. centered at a point capital Q. Okay, this element is characterized by a volume D V, which means the charge D Q associated with this volume is rho D V. This rho D V, as always, behaves as if it were a single point like a charged particle, a point capital Q, and we are observing somewhere here a point capital P, where we place a test charge Q naught. This vector distance, this vector distance, let's show it in green as here, this vector distance is R Q P vector. We drop the index K because now it's a continuous charge distribution. And eventually from a sum we need to move to an integral because we are considering again an infinite set of these infinitesimal charges next to each other in a continuum. All right, so in this case, we know that the infinitesimal electrostatic potential dV due to such point like a charge particle is one over four pi epsilon naught, is of Columbian type. So this is a Columbian type potential, dQ, which is nothing but a rho dv divided by r qp. Note that it's not square because this is not Coulomb's law. It's Coulomb's law for the electrostatic potential. And again, zero field condition and infinity, we always use that. So green function. So now in order to move from this to the overall uh, field v, a point capital P, okay, similar to what we've done here, now the sum becomes an integral. 
So we need to bring out all the constant of integrations, which are one over four pi epsilon naught, and then we integrate over the volume capital omega in dB, we integrate rho over RQP. Okay? So these are the two key results of these distributions, BP for a discrete distribution. And this is BP for a continuous distribution. Well, great. So to summarize what we've done in this video, potential for distributions, case one, discrete distributions, discrete set of uh, point-like charges, we observe a point capital P, we found the superposition principle that applies for E also holds for V, and by means of that, we define V a capital P in this uh, fashion, with the sum. So Coulomb Coulombian type potential with superposition principle. Constant still zero at infinity, so that the, field, the potential goes to zero at infinity. In the case two of continuous distributions, we consider an infinitesimal element with infinitesimal charge. This is the infinitesimal potential due to that charge. And then we do linear superposition, which in this case is the integral. Obviously, uh, if you want to be precise, this rho has to be defined at a point capital Q, because that's where it's defined. So the rho has to be a point capital Q because the integration happens uh, with respect to this variable Q, as we've seen also for uh, the uh, Coulomb's law.